The money pit collapsed in 1861, and a whole bunch of wood sort of went missing. So one plausible theory is we're seeing that collapse. We're in the collapse zone. From the association of the elusive treasure to an ancient religious military group that may have made their way to the island in the days of antiquity to the excavation of certain parts of the island that could lead the hidden treasure of the captivating island, here's how Rick Legina just discovered the biggest treasure ever on Oak Island. What do we have over here? For years now, Rick and Marty Legina of the Curse of Oak Island TV show have searched thoroughly for the treasure that is rumored to be hidden on the island for more than 200 years now. Although they may have come away with some important clues, it appears for some time now that they may be just like the multitude of men who made their way to the island just to find out that this treasure hunt wasn't going to be a walk in the park. However, over time, some clues have made the Legina brothers and the Curse of Oak Island crew start to believe that they may just be the ones to come out and triumph in this quest for this long lost treasure. Are we on the extreme edge of the money pit? I don't know, but at some point, release the hounds, right? It's time to dig. The tide started to turn during season 10 of the Curse of Oak Island TV show. This was when the team made the amazing discovery of traces of gold in the waters of Oak Island. This told them that somebody definitely brought this gold here. That must also mean that there must be gold on the island. And boy, did this prove to boost the morale of the guys on the team. However, they may have to break the curse of the seven dead people before they can think about finding this treasure. If you haven't heard of this curse before, I'm feeling sort of a childish excitement to see what we've only seen in pictures, to dig up and see with our own eyes what that enigmatic and peculiar U-shaped structure. You may be surprised to hear that apparently the treasure that has eluded so many for so long will remain hidden forever until seven had lost their lives looking for this mysterious treasure of Oak Island. As bizarre as that sounds, we're sure people are silently hoping for that final death now that six people have lost their lives looking for this treasure over the centuries. It's kind of nostalgic, i.e. Dan dug it in 71, and we are going to reveal it in its entirety and hopefully bring that data to Dan and show it. I wonder if anybody ever thought of volunteering, seeing as no Katniss Everdeen-inspired volunteers were ever going to stay step up so that their peers would finally discover the treasure. The treasure hunt continued in spite of this deadly curse. Hopefully, something will give. Already, some interesting artifacts have been discovered as a result of this search. For example, there was the discovery of the stone that was covered with strange markings and symbols. There were also other man-made things such as coins and tools that can be traced back to the days of antiquity. They even came across a lead cross that could be traced back to the Knights Templar, the medieval Christian military organization that ensured the safety of Christians who hoped to make the pilgrimage to the holy city we all know as Jerusalem. As you can imagine, this ancient military group had fascinated scholars and laymen alike for centuries, and as such, their supposed presence on Oak Island only adds more to the mystery of this fascinating place. The Holy Grail is a religious artifact, and it's also actually an object of political significance. Back then, to open a cathedral or to mount a crusade, you needed a relic a relic for people to rally behind. Some people have proposed that the ancient Christian military group had made their way to this little island because they needed a place that was secure enough for them to stash their ever-growing fortune that was developed thanks to the favor shown by the Christians in high places all over Europe. This made these people believe that the treasure of Oak Island may contain certain relics of the Christian faith, perhaps even relics like the Holy Grail or the Ark of the Covenant. Maybe somehow they were concealed in one of the undiscovered tunnels that may have been built on the island by the Knights Templar. With such thoughts as to who may have hidden their treasure on Oak Island, you can be sure that the team was eager to get on with their search for treasure. At least that way they can finally confirm who this treasure belongs to. That is why the team gathered with all their tools before continuing with the exploration of the island. Soon, they got to a point of interest which they marked out because they believed it had the potential of being the point where everything will soon be revealed. I still believe there's, there are answers in that swamp. I still believe that, but as of yet, it's, we can't prove it. After marking the spot, the team decided that this was where they were going to build another borehole area. That was perhaps because they had carried out some experiments with the water in the area and found that it had traces of gold in it. Some further experiments revealed that if they dug their borehole within the area, they just might strike the gold that they and many others before them had been searching for all this time. Curious about if this may be the only place where they may find this gold, the team of scientists decided to carry out a similar experiment in the waters found in and around the original money pit. These experiments proved to be the right instincts to follow because this led to the discovery that there might be some gold hidden somewhere 80 to 120 feet deep into the area known as the original money pit. What an amazing prospect. What exactly do you think they'd find when they get to such depth? 
depths. We had walked by that stone many times, and he had it took Tory fellow from Reflex, who was doing the kilometer work in the money pit, to notice it and to bring it to our attention. Well, deeper investigations revealed that this gold may also be in a 20 by 20 area known as the baby blob. Excited about the prospects of this baby blob, the team was eager to focus their search in this area for the time being. That said, they were fully aware about the risks involved in digging down to this blob. They knew that, for example, they would have a tough time getting down so deep if the network of tunnels that they suspect may be under the money pit is actually there. They'd have to move a bit more delicately so that they can avoid losing more than that seventh person. That said, the team decided to persevere by pushing on. This eventually led to the mapping of the area and the location of the most likely spots to find either the treasure or a chamber that may contain the said loot. With any luck, this may lead to their much-needed discovery. After all, they had dedicated so much time and so many resources to this cause already. Something had to give, and they deserved a break for everything they had done on the island so far. Eager to get what they had been searching for, Emma and Helen have taken the initiative to create a sifting station, if you will. Hopefully, there'll be an artifact or two within that material. I just think there's something uniquely strange about this well, and I hope, no pun intended, that we get to the bottom of it. The team soon started off on the construction of what they'd call Borehole DN 11.5 in the Baby Blob. That was the only way they could carry out their investigation as to what may be down there. Hopefully, not only would it lead them to the discovery of a network of tunnels that may be hiding deep underneath the Baby Blob area, it will also help them see if there is truly any treasure down there that is waiting to be unearthed by the team. Love to. We puzzle now over why was that stone shot found down in the money pit? Are they an artifact that was absolutely connected to Oak Island and perhaps here to this land? Believe it or not, the area had been known for some time now. That is why there was a pond in the area to begin with. Previously, it was a pit with a water-filled bottom before it was eventually referred to as the garden shaft. However, that didn't stop the experimentation in the area. For example, an artifact found in the area was experimented on, and that's when they found out that it dated back to the early to mid-1700s. The hand-drawn map is clearly Oak Island. And then there are several things named in French which have been translated for us. One is called the Basin, translated from French. While that clearly correlates to the swamp. Many years before the discovery of the original money pit, again, experiments in the water in the area were carried out, and when the team learned that traces of gold were found, the team couldn't contain their excitement as they considered the prospect of ending this 229-year treasure hunting adventure. As the team carried out their investigation in the garden shaft, they made their way to about 80 feet into the ground. This is when they remembered that, during the Onslow Company's expedition on the island, the company was stumped when they got to about 80 to 90 feet into the ground. Doug and Laird date the boot to 1908-1909 sort of changes in importance to me. Now we want to proceed because it ties with Doug's awakening to the possibility that we're digging in the shaft that Roosevelt dug in. This was because they probably triggered the booby trap, which allowed water to flood their shaft in an alarming manner. Unfortunately, this would bring an end to the Onslow Company's activities on the island because they were unable to pump the water out despite their best efforts. This made other explorers come to the conclusion that there must be something connecting the water from the ocean into these pits that people keep digging on the island. The gold sampling of the water and now the wood is probably the thing that might carry the day this year. I mean, that was the hope. It was always the hope that it would lead to a location where we could do some exploratory drilling or digging and hopefully find the one thing. Add the discovery of coconut fiber in one of these pits in 1851, and you'd find that people started to speculate that some of the earlier visitors of the island had transformed Oak Island into a siphon that allowed water to leak into its pits like a booby trap designed to prevent those looking for treasure on the island from finding it. Before long, a sample of the fibers were taken to the Smithsonian in the beginning of the 1900s, and after it was confirmed as coconut fibers, people had to agree that humans definitely built some of the tunnels found on the island. That was the only way these fibers could have been able to make it so deep into the ground as coconut didn't grow on the island. There's a pretty square wall along one side. Very interesting. He almost only could come up with one explanation why there would be man-made anything in that case.
cave with some sort of deposit of treasure. Soon, a discovery of tunnels lined with stone flatbeds also added to the mystery of the fascinating island. However, before long, traces of this tunnel were lost to those explorers and the ones that would soon turn up on the island after them. Fast forward to the present, we watch scientists, geologists, and historians attempting to get through borehole 8.5 and 13.5. This was so that they could carry out some more investigations on the island. They were eager to get to the bottom of what could be within a 10-foot void that they had just discovered some days before they came to this decision. Excited about getting to the bottom of such mysteries. Holy shimoli, all right. It's a cross. Oh my gosh, I mean, that is an old, old cross. The team decided that the best course of action was to continue digging into Oak Island, because with any luck, they could find the elusive wooden tunnels that they had been searching for for some time now. Maybe it could actually be true that there is more to the garden shaft, just like the rumors said. In the process, the team carried out some extensive discussions, which involved the careful methods in which they'd continue with their investigations into the ground. They had to make sure it remained intact even as the ground began to lose Loosen up for them. Seeing the void cavity, your first thought, of course, is, you know, is this possibly connected to an offset chamber or a previously unknown void cavity tunnel? And might it lead somewhere? However, as the ground began to harden, the team became increasingly frustrated that they couldn't find these wooden tunnels no matter how much they dug into the ground. Must be some sort of bad luck. Eager to come up with some answers, the team's geologist began to poke and prod. However, this didn't lead to the answers everyone was hoping for. In fact, it seemed that all all they could do was continue drilling until they could find the answers that they were looking for. The question is, where is the money pit? That has always been the question regarding any of the work over the last 225 years. I mean, we've drilled exhaustively. It's almost a foregone conclusion that we've been looking in the wrong places. Thankfully, this perseverance did lead to some answers for the team. As they carried on with their work, they soon discovered that they had come across some air bubbles within the ground. Interesting. This made them believe now more more than ever that there must be a network of wooden tunnel systems down there. Hopefully, this would lead to the discovery of the network of wooden tunnels that they've been searching for for some time now. I'm pleasantly surprised that there might be a way into the cave. It'd be even more interesting if we saw some man-made feature in there. Perhaps it's buried in the silts on the floor. As you can expect, this improved the morale of the team as they went over the possibility of finding these tunnels. Maybe they could find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow after all. With any luck, the discovery of this network of wooden tunnels will lead to the discovery of the hidden treasure of Oak Island, or a vault or chamber that may be hiding it along with other ancient artifacts that could tell us more about the history of Oak Island. Following the encouraging discovery of air bubbles, the team decided to proceed with their investigation by collecting the water samples that were close to the air bubbles so that they could be sent to the labs for even more analysis. We find the original money pit, and at that point, we can unleash the hounds, if you will, expose the actual works of a 222-year-old treasure hunt. Hopefully, it could give them more insights as to how exactly they should move with their proposed plot of land and its connection to the garden shaft. Eager to learn even more, the team decided to consult with the Duma Mining Company. Once the team agreed on this, they sent for representatives of the company who were all too eager to get to work helping out with the investigation on the island. Can't say we found the flood tunnel itself, but what I see and hear is a lot of water rushing in and it appears to be rushing in from the uphole side, in other words, from the landward side. Their vision was to repurpose the shaft so that it could support the continued exploration of the area underneath the surface of the island. That was the only way they could get to the bottom of this mystery as to if there was truly treasure hidden in the island. The plan was to reveal the shaft collar before clearing the foundation of the shaft and rebuilding the floorboards. At least then, it would be safer for the team to carry on with their investigations on Oak Island. Following this, they were going to reline the shaft so that it could maintain its geological structure. Getting metal detector hits, that's a game changer if it could be verified. There should be no metal in a solution feature. That way, they could inject grout into the soil so that it could prevent the development of more water flooding in any shafts that may be built in the area going forward. As you can imagine, this comprehensive approach was all done in the hopes that they won't have to carry out such a procedure to ensure the safety and integrity of the land again. These new developments help 
helped ensure that the morale of the team remained high. Today is the last day. There's no question about it. Dumas have to pack up. We have really only half a day of real active search agenda. After all, they were making some sort of progress with their work. That said, they were still all quite eager to get back to work, and they all wanted to know how long this rehabilitation process was going to take to complete. Who could blame them? You'd want to get to that goal as soon as possible too. Fortunately for them, the Dumas company kept on reassuring them that they would be able to continue with their exploration in the safest of conditions as soon as it was feasible. As such, this undoubtedly added to the fire of those hoping to get a chance to carry out a thorough examination of these shafts. It's his willingness to perch above that hole. You're 40 feet in the air and there's a pipe at the bottom that would impale you if you, if you fell. If you fall in there, you're gonna die. After all, the Dumas company had not only assured them that the garden shaft would be in great condition when they were done, but that they may also come across some offset network of tunnels while they were down there thanks to the extensive revival work carried out by them. The team was compelled to believe in them because they had already seen evidence of their work so far. This allowed the Dumas company to speculate that if everything went according to plan, there's only so much you can see between the clay, the water, but it's real. And that's the important part. There's a wood structure down there, and at that point it becomes, okay, they may just be able to come out of these tunnels with that evasive treasure after all. The future certainly looked bright for the Legina brothers and the curse of Oak Island TV crew. Following this meeting of drawn-out plans and lofty expectations, the team set out to do what they could to explore the garden shaft while the Dumas company continued with their work. That said, they still got another high when they realized that the Dumas company planned on using concrete to stabilize their shafts. All they knew was that all these elaborate plans to make the shaft safe and secure for them could only lead them closer to the promised land of the hidden treasure of Oak Island. Spray it under pressure and as it expands, it will seal off that intrusion of water, possibly completely. As such, you can't really be surprised that the curse of the Oak Island TV crew were singing a happy tune as they went on with their work on the mysterious island. They couldn't even be bummed out about the fact that this renovation work may take about two months to complete. After all, this was only a fraction of the time that had been spent on Oak Island searching for this treasure. Care needs to be taken to try to understand what's happening inside of the shaft. In a number of ways, this, this water issue has to be dealt with. For the Legina brothers and their team, this was the time needed to make sure that they would succeed where many others had failed finding the island's treasure. They were ever more grateful that this renovation work will help them explore not only the garden shaft, but also the spot believed to be the original money pit, the ground zero of all this treasure hunting frenzy that has been taking place on the island for more than two centuries. We do argue about safe. Rick, but do you have to go in there to do it? He is impulsive and he's fearless. The team knew that this work, however, was more than refurbishing the state of the island. They knew that this was a chance to learn more about the mystery of this strange island. With every little relic and artifact that was picked up during this work, they knew that this was a chance to add to the pages of the history of the island. As such, they understood that they were going to have to carry out a deeper investigation of some surface-level stuff that some of their predecessors may have engaged in. They knew that if they were going to get to the bottom of the mystery of Oak Island, they were going to have to dig deep into the ground. This was probably why the team left this meeting. The problem with doing this the simple way, which with a long reach excavator, is that we do not have a stable hole. I mean, if we had dug a big pit with stable sides. They knew the time for all that talk was over. Now it was time to act and act fast, as they had to be the ones who would finally get to the bottom of the mysteries of this captivating island. Eager to act, one found that all they could hear on the island following their strategic meetings was the noise of machines and equipment hard at work on the shafts and other surrounding geological structures. There was nothing that was going to stop them from getting to those networks of wooden tunnels and the treasures that they must be hiding. Now that the work had begun, the morale could be felt all through the camp because now the crew had a renewed sense of purpose. As a result, everybody could feel as they drew closer and closer to the answers of the many mysteries of the island as each day went by with three men hard at work. With any luck, not only will they unearth this elusive treasure as they dove deeper into the soil, they will also be able to reveal more about the history of the island. What on earth is up with this tunnel from the Ball Foundation? It's 
pretty extensive. If it is very intricate workings to hide a very significant treasure, that could be it. As they dig deeper and deeper into the soil, as time went on, the garden shaft proved that it may truly have the keys to the doors hiding the secret of this island. The more they carried out their investigations there, the more they began to learn about the island thanks to the discovery of even more artifacts as they got deeper into the shaft. Before long, maybe they may be able to unearth this 229-year-old missing treasure. With the work being carried out on the island by the Legina brothers and their team. The Knights Templar were a band of warrior monks formed shortly after the Christians had retaken Jerusalem in 1091. And pilgrims were going from all over Europe to Jerusalem, a long, arduous journey. And when they arrived in the Holy Land, many of them were actually kind of attacked in the desert going towards Jerusalem. They may finally be the ones who help us learn if this treasure truly belonged to the Knights Templar or any other notable figures in history. While we may not know now, we know that even if it takes another decade or two, the Legina brothers and their team will give it their all to emerge from the earth with this treasure from the association of the elusive treasure to an ancient religious military group. It's an incredible story, a 200-year history from nine nights to thousand, from the heights of power to the absolute depths of uh, tragedy. That may have made their way to the island in the days of antiquity to the excavation of certain parts of the island that could lead to the hidden treasure of the captivating island. Here's how Rick Legina just discovered the biggest treasure ever on Oak Island.